Pedro. Thank you so much, Wendy. That was an amazing introduction. I don't do those things really. <laughs> no, I do. Um, thank you so much for having me today. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you, Tanya and Annette, for having me. It's been quite a journey since 2011, but what's amazing is the faces in the room. Um, the mentors are still here, and that is that, that's, that's a testament to, testament to our industry and to how amazing show cook is. So thank you so, so much. Very happy to be talking in front of, like I said, the mentors. My, my old school lecturers, I've got my chef lecturer over here, restaurant manager, front of house manager, and they're sitting amongst the next group of rock stars in our industry, and it makes me really, really excited. To the rock stars of the future, welcome to a very, very elite group of people. We are a little elite society, aren't we? We're people that get excited about waking up at 6 a.m. and then skipping to go harvest olives. <laughs> we commit our whole lives to perfecting flour. I mean, we do, we do. That's just what this industry is about. We get so passionate about everything that this country has to offer. It's a combination of the best bakers, the best butchers. We've got everyone in this country. What's amazing about a show cook is Shani and Nick bring all those people into one room and then allow you to engage with them. And these people are the people that I work with till today. Uh, no coincidence, my name is Clement, yes, and we spoke, we saw Clement Gold earlier. I am an ambassador. Um, KitchenAid behind me, I'm an ambassador. These are all brands that have met through the doors and the channels that have opened to Shoko in 2011. I mean, there's a picture of me at the competition. We bring up that picture. I oh, know I, I got that. The picture is a little blurry because the camera quality back then wasn't that great. <laughs> it was a joke you can laugh a lot, like louder. But I mean, 2011, and <clears throat> this day changed my life, and still till today continues to. Inter it affects the way I interact with people in the industry because we'll always have Show 2011. It was a platform that springboarded me into TV, into magazines. It wasn't just about one day. It was about the opportunities I followed from that day. And you students sitting in that seat, that's yours right now. It doesn't matter where you make, make it in the competition, even though you are going to make it to the top. It's about the connections you make and the way you interact with the people in this room. These are the same people that you'll be seeing 10 years from now. And I can say that because it's true. Like I said, my lecturers are here sitting today. Wendy, I think you hosted my award ceremony as well. You did. It's a very special group of people. So take note of the person sitting next to you. Take note of the people that have come up and spoke today. These are the people that are going to be a little magic black book in the industry, and they're going to be people that you call on a lot, people that call on you, and that's the magical thing about this industry. So, back in 2011, you can take the picture away now, and I'm way older compared to that. There we go. Back in 2011, I was, as I said, in your position, a second year student at Kent Delatal School. Can I get a, oh yeah, there we go. Um, and I started a little later than my peers did. I started hotel school at the age of 21. So three years behind my peers, I studied business first, but entering this industry, I knew I had three years to catch up, and I just devoted everything into learning everything I could possibly learn about food and the hospitality industry, and it was a roller coaster of a ride. And I, every opportunity that came, I just grabbed it, and lecturers pushed me as well to say, go for every opportunity out there, and if it doesn't exist, create it, and I did. And the first competition that came around was Shoko. It was 
the sacrifice of love. I've never been more obsessed with pork belly. I, I can literally give you the exact three dishes that I presented that day because they are so imprinted in my mind. I can remember the comments that Annette gave about the dish as well. It became everything that I did, everything that I read, everything that I was obsessed with was just show cook. And it was well worth it. Um, the opportunities that followed from that day I can't add value to it because it's just that incredible. And like again, I'm saying this, be with me throughout my entire career, not just in hotels and restaurants, but I mean TV, magazines, and it gets mentioned from international groups as well, which I think just understand how privileged you are to be sitting here today. Let me move on. So 2011, um, not so young me, but young me, in the industry, um, it's where I met my wife. Also, she was studying a front of us. Yes, there's a lot of benefits to to local school. What happens in the walking stairs? In the no, <laughs> sorry, um, it's an amazing industry, and I honestly believe that it was where we honed our skills and our ambition, and it groomed us from just being students into ladies and gentlemen, which is something I carry with me every single day today. It's almost so rare that you can pick out someone that's been in hospitality just by the way that they move, by the way that they interact with people, the way that they answer a phone. And it's, it's honestly, that is one of the biggest skills you'll learn here today and how to conduct yourself as well. So, young me from Shoko, exposed into this industry of pioneers and rock stars in the industry and my eyes just went boom. Obviously, I got placed into restaurants like a lot of you will, will do. And I just kept on remembering that day and the people I interacted with that day. One of them being Abigail Donnelly, who is the food editor of Taste Magazine. And we had a few magazines at the awards that day. And I was like, wait, I really do like cooking in restaurants, but I like talking and telling stories as well. How do I like merge that all together? That's where magazines just became all I wanted, all I wanted to do. So funny story is, at the same time, my wife was working in front of us, also got obsessed with the food industry, but not so much working in the restaurant. She also was really focused on the presentation of food. And this is someone that worked back of house, trained and studied back of house, but her obsession for the culinary arts just took over. And she actually ended up working for Fresh Living Magazine. And I ended up working for Woods Taste Magazine. <laughs> Our relationship was a secret for the first year. True story, true story. <laughs> But what's different then is it was so extremely hard for us to break into that industry. Our paths were basically, you're going into restaurants or you're going into hotels. That was it. There was no blueprint, there were no offerings, and there were no stepping stones into getting into magazines and that side of the food industry. But there actually was, and it was Shokuk. And Shokuk opened that door. And I can tell you now, Without having the platform that I stepped off from with Shogun, I would not be in the magazine industry. It is so, so hard. Today, though, the people that Shaya and Annette have placed strategically in industry have opened up the doors for you. Where we had to struggle to just get our foot like a toe in through the door, you now have that option of picking up the phone and being connected directly into these magazines which is insane. It absolutely is insane. And again, it's just exploded this industry into so much more than just restaurants and hotels, which I still love, by the way, absolutely. But it's opened up to so much more, which is inviting a lot more people interested in this industry to get involved in a whole new way. So, from restaurants then, super happy to get into magazines, and then TV happened. TV is wild okay and it's also I an mean, industry that forces you to be so so creative if you think about a restaurant or a hotel you're working with the menu for a season and then it changes whereas tv you're changing every day multiple times a day and it's not necessarily your vision it's the vision of whoever's paying to be on tv for that few minutes but it's an absolute privilege and again what it does is it puts you in contact with a whole entire a new demographic that you would previously not engage with. It's a blessing. It's amazing. But let me just say, 
if your goal is to just be a chef to be on TV, don't. That it's, it's not, no, it doesn't feed your soul as much as you crafting your personality, your, your style onto a plate and presenting it. That's not what it's about. So anyway, doing TV, got an option to go back to magazines. And here's why I'm actually bringing up that, but I'm not bragging, but I'm going to tell you about it. I was told I cannot do TV and go back to magazines full-time professionally. It cannot be done. I'm doing it. If I can do that and completely break to, uh, like what was previously told to me by all the heads of media that cannot be done, I can't imagine what you sitting here today are able to do. The possibilities and the options available to you are amazing. Not to mention the prizes. Wow. The prizes, the prizes are absolutely amazing. But in all honesty, the opportunities available to you sitting here today, the only thing that's going to limit you is your ability to apply yourself and to step out of your box and just put, on a separate page to paper, put knife to board and make it happen. I had a conversation with a group of students earlier and we were kind of summarizing basically comfort is a swear word. This industry changes so much and COVID was a good testament to that. When the industry was knocked down, it evolved so much during that time. Yes, a lot of restaurants closed down and hotels after that in general suffered. But from that, there's this new branch now where people were delivering foods and offering foods out of their garage during that time. But today, they are standalone entities that have become so much more than that. And a good example of that is at the waterfront where we have the Conscious Carnivals. Now one of the biggest suppliers of and offers of halal wagyu meat. That's followed out of COVID out of a garage. And they've now got the whole of Cape Town buzzing because of the first time ever there's an allow offering for Wagyu. That's just what this industry is all about. You cannot keep the hospitality industry down. We adapt, we modify, and we just keep on going. And again, the parts that were laid down for me, even if you feel that you that it's, those parts aren't available right now, you are so lucky that you can go out there and create them. The industry is evolving so much that you sitting in the chair now have all the opportunity to create entire new parts for what was previously, again, like magazines and working on TV as, a, as an option that was not, ex was not available, now it is. I, can, I can't even imagine what doors you're going to be opening up for the next round of students that make their way into Shogun or in, into the industry. We went out of the I went off on a tangent. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, Shokuk is an amazing family, and 10 years later, to still be, here, still be here with the same people and the same faces that I can call friends and pick up the phone and call at any time, that is so rare and so unique. You're living in Cape Town, or you're studying in Cape Town, which again is a world-class place to just study your craft. Again, we have the best butchers, bakers, wine farms. You don't have to travel more than 30 minutes, 30 minutes to find someone who's mastering their craft. And yes, you have campus, which is maybe at 3 o'clock every day. But I have found that a lot of the education that I've gotten was given by my lecturers, and those were like the, the tools that I needed to go further and explore this country and Cape Town and get so much more education about what's happening on the street what's happening in magazines, what's relevant, relevant right now. So you are extremely lucky to be, or, to be where you are today. So again, to Annette and Shania, thank you so much for this opportunity and for continuing to do it. Up the day, I feel like we should honestly give them a hand. It is, and I, I feel those nerves that I felt when I went into that competition. I'm feeling them today for some reason, but I think it's just because I know what you're feeling right now sitting in these chairs. It's the competition's gonna be stiff, it's gonna be hard, but it's gonna be so, so worth it. And um, go easy in your lectures because as much as you go into these competitions, they do too. They stress just as much as you do, and but do lean on to them and tap into their sense of knowledge to get information to just help you craft 
what you do present during this competition. And that's the bakers, the chefs, I don't know if we have juniors and millions in here as well, but the entire group, good luck to all of you. I will be seeing you throughout the process and then at the, the final dinner, and I look forward to seeing the next generation of rock stars in this industry. Thank you very much.